Good evening, my name is Steve Pereira. Welcome to Quedia on Bent TV, where we explore all things art and culture. C.S. Bacat is an Australian writing phenomena. Her first series, The Captive Prince Trilogy, began life as an original web serial that was self-published in 2013. The trilogy, one of the first queer-themed fantasy novels to be published in the online space, became an instant hit. The first two books, Captive Prince and Prince's Gambit, became Amazon bestsellers within one week of publication and got over 15 million hits. The series was, of course, quickly snapped up by Penguin Publishing and published worldwide in 2015. The third and final book of the Captive Prince trilogy, King's Rising, has just been released and has been gathering great critical acclaim and has made the USA Today bestseller list. Here to talk about King's Rising and what it's like to become a publishing phenomenon, please welcome Melbourne's very own C.S. Picat. Welcome. Thanks, Steve. It's fun to read a pornographic drama in a fantasy landscape populated almost entirely by men. That's a great descriptor. <laughs> Where do you fit in? <laughs> um, I should say that Steve warned me that that was going to be his first question. <laughs> um, so uh, um, I guess most of all, I wanted to write the book that I wanted to read. And uh, I grew up like a queer kid in the 90s in a landscape, reading, loving genre fiction mm. and fantasy fiction in particular, but in a, fa in a landscape in which there were very few queer characters. Um, and so the things that I enjoy that are part and parcel of genre, like high octane escapism, you know, chases, escapes, adventure, true love. I wanted a book with all of those things, but I'm also really interested in you know, homoerotica and themes of sex and sexuality. For me, this was the book that, that I wanted to read. But it's unusual in that you, in, and again, we were talking about earlier about Anne Rice as well, in that two of the most popular and the most uh, genre writers in, in this genre in fantasy, uh, particularly with a very homoerotic, not a lesbian erotic um, element, have been women. Mm. And that's a phenomenon I struggle to understand somehow. Just the gayness of it. Yeah. And not necessarily lesbian. I think, um, I guess, I, first of all, Anne Rice is a writer that, um, that, that I was very, very influential on in me when I was growing up. Um, the fact that she was writing bisexual protagonists for me as a bisexual person was really important. So I looked up to those characters like, uh, like Lestat. But I think um, even more than um, the fact that she was writing um, gay and bisexual characters and lesbian characters as well, um, she approached queerness in a really free way that wasn't necessarily uh, apparent in a lot of the other fantasy fiction that I was reading, by which I mean that often queer characters, even when they were written into fantasy fiction, um, writers would import all of the contemporary social prejudices and oppressions that we felt as a community into their fantasy world as though oppression and queerness were inextricably linked, that that was something that would always be. Um, whereas, at least to, to me, the way that she wrote it was a lot more kind of just free and accepting and matter of fact. So really gravitated towards that. Um, all that being said, like speaking specifically about m maybe um, women writing gay male characters, I think sometimes it's, it's easier to write something very personal when it's at least one removed from yourself. So, um, so perhaps for me, writing a bisexual male was just a little bit easier as a first step than a bisexual female. Now, one of the things we talked about was the way that your fan base developed, because you started this online, you started self-publishing, but then very quickly you developed a fan base who then took this on and started developing a whole series of online interrogations and interactions with yourself that then develop the storyline through. How did that develop and how did that help in your writing process when you're actually directly engaging with the audience in the process of writing? So Captive Prince, um, as you mentioned, started its life as an online serial and it ran as an online serial for about three years. Um, and during that time, readership grew from about six readers to tens and tens of thousands of readers who would turn up every time that a chapter was was published. Um, I think for me, first of all, I, I wrote in that space because at the time that I wrote, there wasn't really anything like Captive Prints on commercially published bookshelves. And I had no conception that a book like this could actually be a, a book at all, mm. let alone go on to any kind of um, commercial success. Um, 
but um, and so I chose the online space as my medium. But I'm really glad that I did that because it allowed that immediate interaction with its readership. Um, and I think. And yeah. so, in the way the work was, people would email you back or put comments onto the web page. Right. And then, every and time that a chapter was posted, readers would um, come and comment, talk about the book, kind of like live as it was happening. In a way, the serialization made it feel almost a little bit more like a like a TV show or something with so regular So how you completed updates. the writing process when you started posting or were you still in the process of writing as you posted? No, I was writing like live, posting as I as I was writing, which was... Um, so the narrative could, was very much shaped by then the response in a way? So I'm definitely a planner and the story was planned in advance, yeah. but um, absolutely there were moments where you, in serial format you find that you write yourself into odd like cul-de-sacs right. or strange places and then have to get out of them. Also, I would say that the audience feedback affected me not in that I cha would change plot points or respond directly in that sense, but um, what I learned was those moments when I felt the most exposed or nervous or, oh my goodness, can I even put this into the story? Um, those were the moments when the readership would absolutely light up and with excitement ab about what was happening. So I learned really quickly that l when you feel that you're most vulnerable and uncomfortable, that means you're uncomfortable because you're doing something authentic mm. and readers will connect with you through authenticity. And I think that that was a really valuable experience because it allowed me to go places then in the book that I might have shied away from if I was, say, had been writing this outside of that live context. So you found that a really valuable experience then? In, in it was of incredibly working. valuable, just an incredible privilege. The, the other thing is, is that like the constant enthusiasm of a readership just energizes and re-energizes you continuously through the writing process. Absolutely. So this is going really quickly, but I just want briefly, a gay sex slave political fantasy thriller. Is that an accurate descriptor? Um, I suppose it is. Um, the interesting thing about Captive Prince is that it has been published as a different genre in every country that it's been published in. So it's it's something that um, perhaps is a little bit genre breaking. Thank you so much. Good luck. And USA Today bestseller list, we have to say that. That's incredible. I know, it's incredible. Um, it's been a really exciting year. Movie rights? Um, uh, HBO Call Me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There you go, HBO Caller. You've been watching Queedia with CS Pacat. Thank you for watching us. Good night.